So hello, I'm Roger Mark de Souza, and I'm the director of Population, Environmental Security and Resilience here at the Wilson Center in Washington, DC. And I'm really pleased that we have with us at the Wilson Center as a distinguished fellow, Dr. Joyce Bonder, the former president of Malawi. And while uh, she's here at the Wilson Center, Dr. Bonder is conducting some research specifically looking at questions around girls education and maternal health. And we have an opportunity to chat with Dr. Bonda today about her work and her legacy. So Dr. Bonda, welcome. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. So I wonder as you reflect on the work that you have done uh, back home in Malawi on maternal health, what do you look back on as some of your accomplishments and things that you're proud of with regard to maternal health? My maternal health is one sector that I have worked in and fought because I refuse to accept that women should die giving life. And it originates from my own personal experience. In 1984, giving birth to my firstborn child, I suffered what they call postpartum hemorrhage. Mm. And because of that, I started to look at what was happening to women. Women were delivering in the village. There were a lot of myths around childbirth, a lot of beliefs, harmful traditions, and uh, therefore, one point in Malawi, 1.2 thousand, 1,200 women were dying giving birth. Uh, one of the two worst on the continent of Africa, the other country being Sierra Leone that had been wow. at war. We reduced to 675 uh, women dying birth, 100,000 life births. It is at that point when I became president. Mm -hmm. And I decided that 675 is still not acceptable. So the, 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 I f very quickly discovered that if I'm going to tackle the beliefs, the grassroots, the community, where 85% of the people live, I needed to engage chiefs, traditional chiefs that are one, the custodians of tradition and culture, but two, uh, they are also listened to. Everybody in the community will listen to what the chief is saying. If you engage them, then you have an ally, a very critical partner in the fight against maternal mortality. So what we did is for them, it was the advocacy side. They went out, changing of mindsets, changing of beliefs, making their own bylaws, ensuring that no woman delivers in the village, and the banning of the delivering of babies by traditional birth attendants. But not casting them out completely, engaging them, even the traditional birth attendants, mm -hmm. as uh, reference points where a woman a pregnant woman can go and have somebody to talk to. Because hitherto, you can only talk to your mother and your mother-in-law when you're pregnant. And it's secretive. You can't eat some vegetables. You can't eat some fruits because of the beliefs that go around them. Therefore, if you engage a traditional chiefs and you engage traditional birth attendants, then you have this critical mass of people working at grassroots, sensitizing the communities to change and to make sure that women don't deliver the grassroots. Mm -hmm. So two lessons that I learned. One is behavior change. Mm -hmm. To achieve that, engage the chiefs that are the custodians of tradition. But two, uh, for infrastructure and other things that a country may not afford within its budget, the private sector is always ready to support. Mm -hmm. So those are the two areas that are, are, are enabled us to reduce maternal death in that period from 675 per 100,000 life births to 460, and the African Union gave us an award for that work. Are there other things that bodies like the African Union could be doing to help advance uh, maternal health interventions or other things that other African heads of states could be doing? African Union, in fact, has been very active in ensuring that uh, they awaken male and female presidents on the continent of Africa. By the way, Africa has done very well in at least having women in state yeah. house. Right. So Africa Union has been very active in sensitizing first ladies, presidents that are sitting in state house to take the responsibility, to realize that they are in the driving seat so they cannot ignore this and hope that it will happen on its own. So they appoint, the, there's, a, there's a whole department under the social commissioners uh, department that looks at maternal health. Mm. And so they appoint uh, goodwill ambassadors for maternal health. So they bring to the fore, to the center, the whole 
issue of maternal mortality. So there's no excuse for any president on the yeah. continent because there's a, 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 a critical partner uh, sitting at the African Union yeah. supporting uh, the fight against this unnecessary death of women giving life. Do these ambassadors help make connections to other sectors of, of a country? Does, are you looking at connections between maternal health and the economy, well-being, education, yes. climate change? Yes, uh, th because th there are so many factors that contribute towards this unnecessary death. And uh, to realize that it's not only Malawi or Zambia, mm. it is this critical network of ambassadors that get together at the African Union to discuss what needs to be done, to learn from one another best practices. For mm -hmm. example, the whole issue of using chiefs in Malawi could be copied and emulated by another country. Yeah, yeah that, that, that kind of thing. The women that are dying now mm -hmm. on the continent of Africa, according to my research, mm -hmm. are between 15 and 19. Mm -hmm. This is the time they should be in school. Yeah. So you find that countries are allowing girls to get married at 11, 12, and you know that is my fight. Yes. And uh, you will find that the countries, women don't have the opportunity to make yeah. an income, to do business, because all those are linked. Right. When you become economically empowered at household level, in a poor household, the, woman, the, the family begins to respect you. Yes. But you also begin to make the critical decisions about your life, about your body. You can even at that point, because your husband now respects you, right. to suggest that you can't, this body cannot have any more children. Yeah. Because sometimes women are dying because of having too many children. Yes. And when I go in the rural areas and tell the, a woman to say, you have six, can't you stop? They'll look at me and say, you have cars and houses. Right. I have children. So yeah. as long as children are looked upon as wealth, women shall continue having children. And as long as this body can continue having babies, then, we, they, they, then they are exposing themselves to danger. They can die because their body is overworked. So I wondered whether you re can reflect on your time here at the Wilson Center. You've been in Washington, D.C. with us. I have learned that there's so much our think tanks are doing, mm -hmm. that they provide a platform. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that I would ever, ever have an opportunity. And I was oh. telling Jen yesterday, as president of this organization, when I thanked her, to for giving me this chance where I could come and put on paper things that I've always worried about have been of concern to me. But what I have learned, two th negative things I've learned while in the U.S. that have nothing to do with Wilson Center. Sure. Uh, the fact that, for example, I learned at when I went to for the girls' summit that the Obama administration had put aside uh, a lot of resources for adolescent girls. And that's not just America, mm. globally. Right. They are looking at age 10 to 14, mm -hmm. which is fine. And I must commend all organizations and all governments around the work for the work they have done around this issue. But my, as an African woman leader and a grassroots advocate, it is 0 to 10. Mm. That is where things are going wrong. Right. I can talk from today until tomorrow about what is happening yeah. between 0 to 10. And if you look Things online, I've on. just issued an, an article on that. That's the work that I've been doing mm -hmm. at the Center for Global Development. So there's an essay now out yes. on this issue. Yeah. So that is what I've learned. And the, I didn't know. These are things I didn't know. I, I thought it was automatic yes. that when we are looking at the girl child, yeah. we look at her totality from the day she yeah. is born to the day she's 20 years old. Yeah. But if, if we miss out, by the time we start when she's sure. 10, it's too late. Yeah. So an opportunity to think about how we engage so how, yes, research yeah. to get those messages. To messages research, out. to get data, to get to, uh, so that the there's evidence. evidence yes. And then therefore to see whether we can persuade governments to, 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 take, to, to, to pay attention. Yes. Well, Dr. Aspects. Joyce Bonder, thank you for being here and thank you for your leadership. And thank you for making the time for an important conversation. Today. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much for thank having you. me. Thank you.